Hi, everyone. Oops, I got to change that banner. Unless you you changed your name to Allie. It's like Greg and Allie Uncensored. Tell me what you want. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Greg Prescott from N5D.com. And I'm joined by my brother from another mother, Jim Delacoli. And while I'm changing the banner, why don't you tell our guests a little about yourself? I started to tell you, uh, I do, uh, astrology is, of course, kind of my thing here. And um, I, I talked about, uh, you asked me to, how I got into it. What I failed to mention was the last time when I talked about, I had my first reading. Um, I, I was going through a, a Saturn transiting my bottom of my chart, third, fourth house cusp which is one of the most depressing, um, low energy questioning times of your life, right? So um, what I found interesting was I didn't know anything of that, but as I, of course, uh, went back over my life uh, after the reading, uh, because she just read my soul, uh, I realized I was living the cycles and Saturn is a main cycle. And I would encourage any of you to, to, uh, if, if, if astrology is of, is it of all interest, first thing I would do if I was you was go go to the Saturn cycle. It's 29 years back in its natal position um, and find out when it hits the first, fourth, seventh and 10th house and just analyze those time frames in your life. You'll be amazed at how you live in a cycle and how that cycle really does influence what happens and uh, and how you really have. Uh, major influence in, in those areas if you would just stop and give yourself uh, that awakening. So. Yeah, and that's what astrology teaches yeah. us is that everything is cyclic. Everything goes in cycles. Yep. Yeah. You know, we were we were looking at Pluto and Cat Capricorn for the longest time. You know, Pluto entered Capricorn initially, mm -hmm. you know, well, years ago. Uh, it, it during And the last time before it just ended the previous time i actually it was in capricorn was during both the french and uh american revolutions and you know you see that energy that it brought about here and there's a lot of talk of that going on right now it's kind of set the table for everything that we're into right now as we pluto entered the age of aquarius and and you know one of the the main premises of astrology is as above so below so if there's a revolution going on in the world around you, guess what? There's one going on inside of you. And uh, it's how you relate to what the revolution looks like internally and then from a soul perspective and then what it's actually looking like here on this physical plane. So it's fascinating, really, when you really start digging in. Yeah, you know, and the, as you mentioned, what's going on in within you, also what's going on in the aethers, yes. you know, uh, galactic wars that are going on up there. Yes. Yeah, because uh, all of it's sorting itself out and the energy is what we're all dealing with. I, well, I, I think you think like me, we're energy, energetic be beings and, and they uh, heavily, heavily influences us. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So before we came on air, I was mentioning to Jim. Well, first of all, I forgot I forgot what day it was. I thought today was yesterday and I've been working a lot on this video. What led me to uh, the video that I'm working on? is I saw an interview with Bill Holter. And as you mentioned, you like his work as well. Yes. Um, so it, it's funny, you will t say what you were uh, talking about because then I'm gonna feed into it with the, the, the planets and things. So. Okay. I was watching this video by Bill and he was saying that he was talking about the price of, of, of silver, which is highly undervalued. And they were talking in a hypothetical situation of silver going to $50 an ounce. And he goes, $50 an ounce is a joke. He said, "There's you should add two, three, four zeros to the end of that. So that would, you know, make it 500, 5,000 or $50,000 an ounce. And he's talking that this could be realistic. And it made me think, okay, so what if the dollar... Well, it's only a matter of time, not if, but when. What happens when the dollar shits the bed? What if silver goes to $1,000 an ounce, which would be an extremely low amount if the dollar collapses? But hypothetically, if silver went to $1,000 an ounce, how much would a silver dime be worth? 
how much would a silver quarter, 90% melt value be worth? And I, I made a chart. I figured out all those values, all the way up to $5,000. But according to Jim, it could go all the way up to 50,000. So add an extra zero at the end of that chart for the 5,000. But my example, in the video that I, I made, it'll be coming out tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern on the N5D YouTube channel. But the example I used was, okay, say say silver's at $100 an ounce. And this is way below what it could possibly be. If you had $100 an ounce, if you had a silver dime, its melt value would be like $4. Okay, so you got $4. You can use that silver dime. This is why it's so important to have junk silver because you can use that silver dime, find a farmer, barter it for some eggs or some milk or a loaf of bread or something like that. You got something tangible. Whereas if you have like a bar of gold, what the hell are you going to do with that? Unless you want to buy a large piece of property. But, you know, your, your junk silver is the way to go and you should buy it while you still have the opportunity. And I'll turn the floor over to you. I, as I said earlier, uh, the first call in the beginning of this one was 2001 is when I actually started the journey. And, and, I, and I followed gold and silver. I was following the planet of Uranus because Uranus brings us the truth, right? But in finding the truth, Greg, what I had to learn from Uranus because it's uh, chaotic in its uh, workings. And so what I had to learn was maybe in finding the truth, you have to have all the untruths or the lies revealed. And so what happens sometimes when Uranus becomes prevalent, uh, the lie might poke its head out a little farther out of the hole so you can maybe see it better for what it is and then sort it out. So once you do figure it out, then when you do get to the truth, you're not going to get tripped up. And so in 2011, I thought that was a run up in silver. I got in it and man, did they, they, they toasted us in that, uh, in that, you know, 06, 07, 08 financial thing and then they they ran silver up and then they just they they hoodooed us right um i think i think it's a little different now because everybody started to get physical versus get the paper or get the the slv or pslv um i think people are have realized that i gotta have it hand as you said uh because the truth is that if it's not in your hand you don't see it do you really own it and that's what uranus is teaching us and we're all having to play that and so i really think this play this time on gold and silver uh, is going to be the play that um, extreme uh, wealth transfer is going to happen. And um, I want to be careful in that because uh, wealth is, uh, it, it's a term, I guess. And what does it matter if you, you know, uh, if you have $500 million, if you're an asshole, I guess, right? Um, so to me, it's about, are you wealthy as an individual? Do, do you have worth? from a perspective of who you know you are, what you are, what matters, then I think all that wealth you could do something with. If, if you're doing it to become more selfish, more of a tyrant, more of an asshole, you're not going to get anywhere. And so that's where we want to be careful. Uh, it's not about telling people you were right. I don't care about that. But it's about doing what's right for the time and really doing the best you can and helping as many as you can. And Greg, you know, that's what you and I are doing. So, so you, you, you said... You, hang on. Um, let me get back in into the room here. You you said that you got into silver around 2011. Well, I got it before that, but I thought that was a major run up. I, I invested quite heavily. Okay. Yeah. What? How much was silver when you got into it? I got into it at four bucks. I got it for four. Wow. <laughs> but I paid uh, 35, 38 dollars an ounce because it went to 50. I was telling my dad, I've got, I still have the email back from like 2007 when silver was, I think like $7 and maybe eight, seven, eight dollars an ounce. And I told my dad, I said, invest in silver, get all you can. Yeah. You never listened to me. $7 an ounce. <laughs> well, and if you've watched Greg, they, they play games because uh, I've been, I deal in some of the, you know, the Eagles and you know, Cougar ants and stuff and. Uh, if you've watched the, the premiums get out of whack sometimes, I mean, there was times when premiums were over 10 bucks. It, they'd say the Eagle was, or the silver uh, announce was, you know, say it was 17, but 
you, you couldn't get an eagle for less than 30, right? So yeah. it's interesting how they play. And you, you know, you, you don't gain, somebody gains in the middle somewhere. And it, the price, uh, when you look at the comics, doesn't appear to move up. So they play a lot of damn games, and they have to because they're in the corner. And I think we're close to the end. So. If you go to eBay, you can find like a silver, one ounce silver Liberty coin for like $30. And I, I, I just checked what the going rate for silver is right now. Silver price today. And it says twenty six ninety one. It's so almost twenty seven dollars, but they're asking thirty or more. Thirty is a low end, but you know what? If I had the money, I'd gobble it up because I it that's nothing compared to what it's going to be and where it's going. Uh, there's so many uh, electricity is very conductive and and, uh, and with uh, silver, and it also a virus and a bacteria can't grow on silver. I know you know that. Most people don't know that. It has so many purposes. Its true value, Greg, is that we can't make it and that it has other properties and principles that are extremely effective for the life force. And so that's how I think the true value started. And then because we couldn't make it, I think throughout the different turns in society, they're like, good, it can not it, it can be manipulated. It, it can be manipulated, but it would take a very difficult and a very you know thought-provoking uh, evil person to do it. Well, we've done it. But the truth is, if you just get back to physical, you got it. You know, and it's what it always boils down to. And that's what Uranus is trying to teach us here um, with that. It's about, look, you either hold it or you don't. So it might look good in a in an account, right? Uh, SLV, but you, can you exchange it for the actual amount of silver that the SLV says it is? And that's the ticker symbol on the, on the uh, stock market. And no, you can't. Sorry. When, when you bought your silver, did you buy silver ounces? Did you buy junk silver, a little of both? I, uh, I, w I would cost average for a while, and I bought a little bit of everything because I'm like, I don't understand it yet. But I, I'm a firm believer that the more I deal in things and the more I learn and the more I like, like uh, put myself into that environment, the more I figure out. And so... I've really learned. I think junk silver is a brilliant move. If there, I don't even know if there is any anymore. Uh, I, I don't. I haven't looked to buy any, but I think junk silver is a brilliant move, as you stated earlier. Yeah, it's it's the way to go, as far as I'm concerned. And as far as that, uh, Bill Holter was saying the same thing. What I can do right now is I'll, I'll put up. I'm going to put up a chart real quick. Uh, and this is the chart that I'm working with. Hang on. Let me, uh, <clears throat> let's go like this. Okay. This is the chart that I have up on. I don't know if you can see it that well, but uh, this is the actual 90% melt value for a dime, a quarter, and 50 cents. So, <clears throat> you know, what, what Jim or Bill Holter was talking about uh, was, you know, $50 an ounce is a joke, you know? And uh, I've got this chart going all the way up to fifty or $5,000, but he said it could feasibly go up to $50,000. So you would add another zero on that, which would make a dime, one dime be worth over $2,000. One single quarter would be worth $5,600. And a 50 cent piece would be worth $10,000 for one yep and and the only thing i want to remind people greg is if we get into that kind of world i'm not sure what a dollar is going to be worth, right so it might cost you two thousand dollars to get a loaf of bread i don't know yeah um, that's that's a good point yeah you just want to what you want to do is just kind of stay in the middle here yeah that looks fantastic but if we're into that kind if it gets to that type of world what kind of world will it actually be i don't know you know um, well Hypothetically, well, yes, yeah, great point. Hypothetically, though, let's say let's say it goes to two thousand dollars, and you have a roll of quarters that are now worth almost two hundred and twenty-five dollars each. Yes. That roll of quarters would be worth. Well, let's do the math. Two twenty-five times forty equals nine thousand dollars. Yep. 
for a roll of quarters, a, t- a ten dollar roll of quarters. <laughs> and 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 the sad truth though is that because we printed so damn much money, that math is probably going to make it. It'll make it through to that math, and nobody nobody asks a question, right? So nobody asks that question. And I'm just hypothetically doing. I went all the way up to. Fifty thousand dollars. Hypothetically, if it went to fifty, that would mean it would be fifty-six hundred and twenty dollars per quarter. A roll of quarters would be worth a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. Could you imagine that walking around with a quarter million dollars in your pocket? Yeah, with a roll of quarters. <laughs> it sounds like the the start of a bad joke. Hey, what's that in your pocket? Is that a roll of quarters? <laughs> I'm excited to see me. <laughs> I'm excited about this roll of quarters. <laughs> I don't care about you, but this roll of quarters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, now I see that there's four other countries that entered BRICS. Egypt, uh, I forgot, Iran, United Arab Emirates, and one other country. So now there's nine countries and potentially Argentina and a couple others yeah. are going to be entering. What people are doing, though, is they're mistakenly saying that BRICS is backed by gold. It's not. There is, however, a new country, uh, a country, Zimbabwe, recently this past month, in April, they went to a gold-backed standard. So I think if BRICS were smart, they would bring Zimbabwe aboard and convert all of their standards to gold and, and, you know, and get away from fiat currency, and that would... That would be the end of the dollar, the petrodollar. Yes, the the uh, unfortunately history is littered with guys that truly tried to do the right thing. Gaddafi was one. And, uh, I think Saddam Hussein was in that group as well. They did pile the gold up, and we uh, decided to destroy them and take their gold, and that's how we were able to keep the game going. So, you know, the, the, the sad truth is, is. This is a damn evil joint and uh, how it's being run. The our world's not necessarily evil, but how, the people that run it, are, they're not good. Anymore, so. Yeah. I'm drinking uh, this sugar-free. It's made with stevia. Oh, okay. It's called Zevia, and it's like a Dr. Pepper knockoff. Uh, it's really good. Is it good? Is it, yeah. Stevia's pretty good. Pretty, pretty so I've, been, I've, I've been on a... Uh, a keto diet since the beginning of the year and I lost over 30 pounds and I feel good but I got to that point of where like this month I'm not even gonna weigh myself anymore I'm at a weight where I can control basically and stay where I'm at good so I'm, I'm good with this and I'm it's somewhere between like 195 198 somewhere around there you know so good. I'm, I'm good, good with that weight I just uh, it won't upload but I just shot a tour spoon video and I just talked about uh, I've been kind of studying when um, the moon, full, full of new moons run in pairs, right? Uh, we, we, we got right now we're in the pattern of the Scorpio full moon, which happened first, and then the Taurus moon, new moon, which is the opposite sign of Scorpio. Uh-huh. Uh, so the full moon is in front of the new moon. That's kind of backwards, but it's not. So w- what I was trying to explain to people in the video was the full moon in Scorpio is about your soul journey. Well, I found a lot of people having a lot of fear, panicking, and what I've noticed, and I've been working on this, but that really put it together this time, this these two uh, moon uh, positions, was that when the full moon happens before the new moon in the in this pair of signs, you're working on karma that has been lifelong, several lifelong, right, and ending things. When the new moon in the in the pair cycles first, you it's kind of like you get to work on something that you planted the seed for in that new moon. So of course, moon, new moon would have been first, you would have planted a seed, and then you would have got to, you know, uh, finalize or try to finalize or complete something within two weeks when the Scorpio moon fell behind it. But because it's backwards. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, and so, you know, my, my thing was working on healing. So it's funny you said that. And it, I already got the video. It just didn't pull up. It won't, it won't stop uh, just spinning, saying it's trying to finish processing. But what I told people is, here's a huge opportunity to, to, because uh, Taurus is about, I'm going to do, I'm going to make a plan. I'm going to work the plan. 
Well, because we went through that Scorpio full moon first, it's about, Greg, it's about a chance to, I think, heal. I think care for, take care of yourself um, in ways that something that have been cyclical or something that's been you know, long, long, long in the making, maybe you could find something unique right because uranus is in taurus way to become healthy it'll just be and you just get it out of the blue won't even be anything that led you you know step by step just be something that came and led you something so it's funny you brought that up because i, I wanted to have the video up before we went uh live but it just won't pop up so, so it's perhaps the end or an opportunity to end these karmic cycles from the past yes and and which you know, if you if you have disease, it's probably from a way of operating, an energetic way, right? It's not from I uh, ate bad. No, it's from a way of operating, from allowing, right, or dealing with something that, you know, you just you you. Uh, I always love that song "Heavy" by uh, Lincoln Park because if I just if I put dragging around what's bringing me down, and just let go, I'd be free, you know. And I always think of that when I'm dealing with stuff that I just continually just let pull me you know pull me and then you think and i'm about to break <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right from one step closer lincoln park reference <laughs> yes. oh. so i i was watching uh suspicious observers god damn him ben ben davidson he he does amazing work but you know, lately he's been pushing this whole shift. And, you know, I, I'm not going to deny that there's not a pole shift. It's obvious. We can see the physical poles moving where, the way they're tracking everything. Yeah. And it seems like every 12,000 years there is a physical pole shift. They can tell from core samples into the earth. They can tell by the magnetics and lava. But he, was, he put out a video today. Here, I'll, I'll just play a little clip of it. Hang on. Yeah. Be safe, Be safe everyone. everyone. Folks, Folks, just five, five days, days after that video was posted, posted it happened again. again. Of, of all the evidence we've seen so far, the auroral records being obliterated in a modest solar activity year was really something else. So, so needless, needless to, to say. say. Yeah, there was an aurora in Arizona. Isn't that crazy? Wow. With the, the auroral records, records breaking, the unexpectedly, the unexpectedly strong solar, solar storms, storms, the observers, observers knew that the magnetic pole shift we've been tracking, tracking closely for more than a decade had kicked, had kicked into, into a higher gear. gear. Then, then our friend, Sergei Simonenko, one of the best Earth scientists in Russia, came out and said what so many top scientists are staying behind closed doors. Not only are we entering the pole shift, the magnetic reversal, the reset of the disaster cycle in the next stage of Earth, but we had a tremendous magnetic anomaly resulting in the acceleration in March of 2023. This perfectly explains why things are accelerating at an alarming rate now and why the unexpected has become the expected. Wow. Uh, that was kind of that was kind of interesting. Uh, I, I just got a couple points I want to make on this and I'll, I'll see what your response is. He bases a lot of his work on this one other person's work or at least some of his work on this person's work that said that the pole shift, the actual physical pole shift might not happen for like another 130 years from now. He's saying it could happen by as quickly as 2050. And I, I'm i not feeling that. And even if it were, would you want to even live through a pole shift? Right. Yeah, I... I um... I, I think the, and this is, this is me. Um, I'm, I'm an expert in, I consider myself an expert in nothing, but I'm not <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. So, um, I don't think we, I think the timelines are messed up. I mean, if you look back, the Mayans, their, their, uh, time frame was a moon phase, not the, the moon phase through the Zodiac, not the sun. So I didn't I, know that. Yeah. So, it's, and they have 13 bok tons in a year, which is 13 months, right? Or 13 28-day periods, right? 
So right. I'm his, we got somewhere along the line, somebody grabbed history and changed it to a year where it's supposed to be a month. Every time this moon goes through all the, all the, from our perspective through the Zodiac, that's a year. So what if, and I'm, I'm just opening people's minds here, trying to, what if it's 13 years is one year? Think of how we do dog years, right? What if 13 years is one? Now start going back. Look what we've done basically since the beginning of 1900. Look how much we've, we've uh, destroyed because we've had two tremendous world wars. Plus yeah. we've had, you know, we've had, we've had huge wars and, you know, uh, devastation in other parts of the country where we weren't a part of, so we didn't advertise it. We didn't promote it. Right. Um, but it, look what we've done and look what we've overcome. I mean, we weren't even really in motorized cars much early in the 19th century. Look what we're in now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. The, the word months comes from moons, 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 yes. moons. Yes. If you look at the back of a turtle, it's broken down. There's 13 segments, one for each moon. I did not know that. A, yeah. Interesting. That is, that is it. Look how Every, long go ahead. Look how long they live. Turtle. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, they do. Yeah. Oh, no. In a world where fashion was stuck in the past, came the N5D quantum tie-dye t-shirts revolutionizing the way we think about fashion. Gone are the days of boring, bland fashion. Introducing the N5D quantum tie-dye t-shirts, where every shirt is a work of higher dimensional art. Say goodbye to the same old, same old, and hello to the most epic most legendary, most quantum tie-dye t-shirts in the universe. In 5D quantum tie-dye t-shirts where fashion meets quantum coolness. And every, every war is a banker's war. So, you know, you, and look at like World War II when uh, Prescott Bush, George Bush's grandfather and father alike you know depending on which bush you're looking at but right. prescott bush uh was arrested for funding both sides of world war ii yep. we never learned that in our in our history books had we learned that do you think either bush would have been elected president no not at all none of them would have been in the positions they were in if we would have known. so why why did they omit telling us about that in our history books because history is by the winner or the person in control. Yeah. That's not what happened. That's why I said you got to go get it yourself. You've got to do the work. And it wouldn't fit the agenda. They probably knew way back then about 9 11 and that George Bush's uh, cousin or nephew, Marvin Bush, would be the head of security there at the uh, trade towers. Yes. You know, it's all planned out. It's all planned uh, out. So in 11, I was talking, uh, I, I saw Uranus and uh, Venus were going to be at the zero point Aries together, right? Right there. That's a beginning, right? And, and Uranus, uh, Aries is the beginning point. Venus rules money. Uranus rules um, the truth. So I, Greg, I was on, I said, this is when it's going to happen. May 1st, 2011, Barack Obama comes out. It was real early in the morning. And you know what he, you know what he, uh, Let's, he informs us of, we, we killed Osama bin Laden. Wow. And we always get him in the middle of the night. I don't care. Anymore. It never happens during business hours or, you know, when the stock market's open. Somebody said this and they're damn right. Everything I look at. So he comes out and says that. And guess what happens, Greg? Silver tanks. They tanked it. It was close to 50 and they tanked it. That was a part of trying to tell you the damn truth. Right. And that was in 2011. Do you think they actually killed him? I, I, no, I don't. No. And then Obama taking credit for it, and yeah. without even showing the remains, they they buried him at sea. Yes. Nothing fishy yeah. about that, huh? Nope. Nope. But just just like nine eleven, the guy takes out the insurance policy for what two billion dollars? Yeah, Silverstein. Yeah, within six months of the, the thing blowing up. So, whatever. And then, 
and at the Pentagon, you know, this missile, it wasn't a plane. It, if anything, it was a missile. Yes. And missile hits the Pentagon. And what do they do immediately afterwards? They cover it up with dirt. Why would you do that? That's a crime scene. Why would you cover it up with dirt, for fuck's sake? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, shit, man. Well, everybody's people are starting like to you and I, Greg. We're so far beyond that even being like, but what? Yeah, we, we're so beyond that. We got more people in our in our group now, right? They're not they're not being like, huh? You know, I, I, they wouldn't do that. We're so far beyond that. We know the game, right? We understand that the gig is they're gonna have you looking left because right is what they're taking from you or what they're <laughs> trying to get, and so we get that. Um, but Smoking I think mirrors. absolutely, yep. but I think astrology is really, uh, and by the way, it's astrology sign, the sign that rules astrology is Aquarius and Pluto is entered Aquarius. Like you and I talked cause we went through the Capricorn one. Yep. Ago. And so I think really astrology and its relevance is emerging, right? Cause Pluto brings from the depths, right? And it brings you very, very sound uh, timeless information that will equate, right? So I think with what's going on in the sky today, you'll see astrology continue to elevate, but you'll also see people take it and use it for practical purposes. They'll use it like, Greg, you're, you go and use it on you. I know because I've, I've watched your shows. That's what I'm doing. That's what you got to do first with it. Make yourself better. Find yourself. Know yourself. Get your rhythms. Get, and once you do that, then you can start now let's promote it. Now let, and then when you do that, Greg, that group that comes will be a force that cannot be stopped. And that's what we're doing. I mean, that's where we're at. So. I want to get back to the Maya, uh, what you were talking about, the Maya. Okay, hypothetically, if there were 13 years instead of, well, if there was 13, 13. years for every 12 years, we'll say. 13 years, year, one year. What year are we in now? Exactly. Have you figured that out or math? I didn't do that. Well, because when do you want to start? It? When did they start it? Does that make sense? You know, I, I, you try to get the relevance of when they were existed. Great. If it's every one year equals 13 might only have been 500 years ago. Right. Instead yeah. of 5,000 or 10,000 or 12,000, if you think about it. So if you take one year equals 13, I think it's 26,000 year through the equinox, procession through the equinox. What if it is only, right, every each year? So what if it's only two, 200 years? I don't know. From what we're guessing, I don't know. We're going to find out. Does well, well, I'm still kind of lost on that because there, yeah, I, I agree with a, 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 a harm, harmonious calendar, a natural ca calendar that would have 13 moons in a full year. I think, and then all the days broken up or the months broken up into even amounts. And then there would be one day left over. Yeah. You know, and, and I, you know, the Maya would, would call that a day without time, I believe. Yes. But, um, yeah, go ahead. but if that were the case, then it'd only be a day off from each year since the calendar wasn't invented. But then what year is it? I guess that's all I'm saying. Well, no one was, knows. <laughs> yeah, two thousand. It'd be two thousand years. Two two thousand times thirteen would get you to twenty six. So what if we we take it and equate it to the sun? It's a two thousand year cycle that all this cycles all the way through, and we've got it screwed up. That that's my question to the audience. In the Senate, I think it's the Senate. It might be Congress, but I think it's the Senate. Up uh, the Capitol dome, um, around the, the dome. There are little murals, and one of those murals is the Mayan calendar. Why would they put that there? Right, right. That's a good question. Well, why does the UN emblem look like a flat earth? I mean, it's right in your face. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying it's flat earth. Why does it look like a flat earth? That's good. <laughs> I, I just, to me, that the whole flat earth is a huge psyop. Yeah, I, I didn't say it was. I mean, yeah. I, I'm sitting there this morning watching the sun come up. It's setting, right? 
where in you know in uh, half the world away it's set. I, I don't see how it could be flat. I'm not saying, but I'm saying the UN calendar. If you look at the map, yeah, got, it's all broken. You're out. right. Yeah, it's in grids. You're right. And I You're always right. think of that stuff. That's right in our face, and nobody ever asks the question. Why is that? Why is that? What represents the UN? What the hell is that? So. I've always thought, you know, I, I when when I first heard of the flat Earth theory maybe 10 years ago or something like that. I thought it was interesting and I spent about three weeks researching it. And what it, my, my conclusion was, you can never prove it and I'm wasting my time. Once again, smoke and mirrors, look over here at the flat earth because you'll never find it. And in the meanwhile, while you're wasting all this time over here, what else is going on that you could be growing from? You can't grow from the flat earth. Your evolution, yes. Yeah. yeah. And yep. that takes away from your own spiritual growth, your spiritual progression. Yes. Here, waste your time over here. And they're so adamant. The flat earthers are so adamant. Okay, so what if it's flat? Okay. <laughs> it's not the first time we've been lied to. Yes. <laughs> and until we get all the lies figured out, it ain't going to be the last, right? So it's no. like we got to no. keep, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. I'm not that hooked up on flat earth. I'm not. So no. I'm fascinated by the planets and the energies. And it almost makes me feel like this was a, like there was a, po a powerful group that we assembled this, we, we assembled it. And, and then we identified the planets with the energies. And, and then we let that knowledge be known. I don't, I'm not saying I was in there, whoever the group. Uh, and I think that that's our way to get back to ourselves. And that's what we did. And I think it's like the Fibonacci cycle uh, spiral that um, the further out you are away, the farther your, your cycles are. But as you get closer back to you, it gets closer and closer and closer and closer. And, it's, and it speeds up. And, and I think that's really what a chart is when you go, you no, know, you got to get back to you, that dot, that speck. You got to get back there. Because you, you put it out and it expanded, you created, now you got to bring it back. And I think that's all we do. So it goes out and then it goes back in, out and in. And we just spiral all the way through. And that's my opinion, Greg, of what we actually do. I find Saturn really fascinating because George Maxwell, <clears throat> he had a, a long dissertation on the cult of Saturn, the cult of L, basically, and how much Saturn worshiping is going on, you know, 6-6 six, six in, the, in the cult of Saturn. And you look at all this stuff. This is all Saturn worshiping. Yes. All of it. Um, and, and Saturn rules the last of the earth signs, Capricorn. Uh -huh. So what it rules in our, my opinion, we're an energetic being and this physical being is fueled by the energy, right? It's the life force that's given to, but the physical body deteriorates and goes away. And so Saturn is the ultimate of the lessons. So I think it is the devil. I think it is evil. I think it's you having to understand being in a physical restricting realm because that's what you got you got a body if you trace the origins of saturn and the cult worshiping even the mortar board the black box basically on the top of the head the, the saturn yeah saturn it's all saturn the saturnalia Yes. So much crap. Yes. A friend of mine sent me a video earlier today, and it's called 10 Dangerous New Age Items to Remove from Your Home. And it's by this one woman who used to be huge in the genre, Doreen Virtue. She's now a born-again Christian. And one of the things that she's saying you got to get rid of is astrology. What's, what would you want to say to Doreen Virtue? I, you know, I, I think that uh, anything used for um, control or you know sheer power is not good. I don't care what it is. So if that's her argument, her angle, I agree with her. Um, I think when uh, if you use it to come to an understanding and to empower, not to have power for for power's sake, I think uh, it couldn't be further from the truth. But there again, it's above, so below, light and dark. What's up? What's down? Right. So, 
Um, I could argue with her or against her. I'm not trying to dodge a question. <laughs> it, it, it sounds it, like you're dodging the question. Well, uh, I think there's you're an astrologer. This, this is what you do. And but, she's but, saying, no, you're, you're wrong. And you, well, sh you shouldn't even do it for any reason whatsoever. She's saying, and well, if, if that's her angle, then I, I would love to, I'd love her to have come chat because I don't do it for control purposes. I do it for understanding and to empower. And I but think that's we, all we're supposed to do here. I agree. I agree with you. But what we do know is that there are like every, every major, every person, a uh, world leader and stuff like that, they have master astrologers yes. Yes. that they hire to make sure that whatever they're going to do, sign a bill on a particular day to make sure that everything is lined up with the stars, yep. that it's going to flow in their favor, whatever favor that might be. And, and but where I have to, where I would then go to is say, and in their favor is from an evil perspective of they want control of power. And yeah. that's what I do not do. I do not. When somebody comes for a chart reading, I could do that to them. I do not. I want them empowered. I want them to know there's so much more than maybe their understanding before that point they come to me. That's the difference. When you start with evil, Greg, you get evil. If you don't start with evil, I don't think you end up with it. So that's my opinion. Let's see. Uh, well, her... Her uh, video said 10 dangerous new age items. And astrology is not new age, by the way. No, um, yeah. but she only listed eight altogether. <laughs> she said 10, listed eight. One was, number one was divination. Number two was pendulums. Number three are new age books. Number four is idolic statues, which what might be Buddha, even angels, Jesus, Mother Mary. She said none of that stuff. Okay. Uh, number Five would be new age clothing with symbols like dream catchers, an ohm symbol, deities, Ganesh slogans, even heavy metal bands. You can't wear that stuff. Number six would be jewelry, uh, pagan merchandise, sacred geometry, goddesses, astrology, crystal bracelets, stuff like that. Number seven would be wall art, and number eight would be idols. Well, I guess stat. Well, similar to the idolic statues, but I don't know. What was her basic argument? For this? That you're giving your power away and that it's it's not in the highest and, and greatest good and that you're not supposed to even sell that stuff. You're just supposed to discard it, throw it in the garbage, burn it, whatever. You might have spent thousands of dollars on it. She says you can't even make a penny or try to get your money back from any of that stuff. Burn it all, she says. Well, so I against, think she's lost it. I, I think she's out there. <laughs> well, I'm against mimicking. I think the I'm going to say the Jewish, but it's not just the Jewish, right? It, it, other cultures and other uh, parts of society do it. They mimic what the originators create, right? And then. Mm. Then they perfect it or they have the Isn't money. that what archons do? Yes. We talked yep. about that. Yes. And so I think she's talking about that. You're trying to mimic an idol, you're trying to use the idol. Uh that's just what I what I argued against, which is I'm not doing it for power so sake. I'm not doing it because that is whatever. I'm doing it because I'm understanding it and I want to become more. I'm trying to become better. I'm not trying to do it for control's sake. So I kind of get what she's saying, but her argument don't work with me. Let me ask you about the Bible. Fact, fiction, fiction, is it just the greatest story ever told, like Jordan Maxwell says? I, I, I do think that somebody has the, the lineage of whenever, I think societies crash way more than we say they do. I think uh, they crumble and they might crumble in small sectors, sometimes major sectors. I don't know the time frames, but I do think it does the knowledge it gets passed down. I think the Bible has a lot of that knowledge in it. Do I think it was changed and skewed? Yes, absolutely do. For the people who wanted to control from one societal collapse to the next creation. And I think that's what's happened. If Jordan Maxwell interviewed this guy, uh, he was going for his doctorate in theology. And he was given full access to the Dead Sea Scrolls. And by the time he got done, he disavowed religion 
<clears throat> completely. He said, I'm done with it. And Jordan's like, what did you discover? He said that it's all astro theology. None of it's real. So if Doreen Virtue is saying that, don't look into astrology, why not? Because you might find the truth. Yes, because you're seeking the truth. She don't want you to do that. Yeah. You know, even like when people say, oh, Jesus walked on water. Jordan Maxwell said that that is like if you see a sunset or a sunrise over the ocean and the sun's glimmering on the water, that's the sun walking on water. S-U-N, the sun walking on water. Right. Yep. Yep. Yes. Um, and, you know, a lot of the stories, Greg, are told throughout several religions too, right? The Bible. Yeah. The Bible's not even included, right? So. I, I just try to be careful. I think religion does keep us organized to a way and the Bible and the, the Quran, whatever, but we have what we need and it's to go yeah. inside. It's the ones that don't go inside. They're afraid that, they, well, they're on a different journey this life. I have no problem with that. I'm, I'm, I go internally, you go internally because we're trying to find the answers. So we're trying to get, become more. The way I see it, you know, it's the, the Bible does provide good morals, values, parables, stuff like that. And I'm, I'm my parents are Christian yeah. and you know, it's not like I, I love them any less for being Christian. I was raised Methodist and I, I got out. And once I left religion, I felt like this weight of the world lift off of my shoulders. Right. I, I feel free without religion. And I think that's one of our lessons at least one of my lessons that i'm supposed to learn from is to move beyond religion and i've mentioned this a few times in previous videos and in a meme on on uh on the internet but if a ufo were to land in your backyard there's two things that it wouldn't have money or a bible good point Um, but I think about people that are extremely religious. I mean, I've stepped back enough to look at this and go, maybe that's where they need to be at this, this stage of their soldier. Yeah. I'm okay. With that. Yeah. So I don't want to force them out of that. Right. right? But I'm, I'm also don't want them to force me into. It, right. So, and it's not, you know, we don't, we just don't need to let everybody be. We need to recognize where everybody is and we need to help wherever we can. Some we can't help at all, but we got to recognize. See, I have issues with all the, let's say one thing and then turn around and say the exact opposite. And I think there's, I don't know how many, I saw some incredible list of all these ways that the Bible contradicts itself. Why not just tell the truth? You know, if you look at like the 10 commandments, a lot of those were just rewritten and rephrased from what was originally the, the Egyptian book of the dead. Yes. Yes. It, again, it depends on who grabbed the power as the transition of, uh, was changing from one society or collapse to a the building of another. I think that's what we're looking at. I think we're in one of those too, by the way. Um, I'm not, I didn't get into astrology thinking society was going to collapse. I got astrology because I was lost. I was like, I got to find myself. Nothing that I have to my, at my fingertips works, including religion. Didn't make yeah. sense. It wasn't, I wasn't against it, but it's like the, it's hate lead me nowhere. It's, this does not make sense. Right? So. When Zeitgeist came out, I thought they did one of the best jobs of putting religion into layman's yeah. terms to, to help understand like all the previous deities that existed that were born to a virgin mother on December 25th, died on a cross, 12 disciples, you know, same story over and over and over again, with the most recent one being Mithra, Mithraism. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just a really fascinating way. And then when you look at the genius behind the writing of the Bible, that it's in perfect astro-theological order, through metaphor, you know, the, the golden calf, the blowing of, you know, the, the, the Taurus, the blowing on the Aries horn, um, 
Jesus feeding the masses with two Pisces fish. Yes. Follow the, the man bearing the pitcher of water to the house, Aquarius. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's perfect astrotheological order. It was like Jordan Maxwell said, and the person that he interviewed, it's all astrotheology. Yes. Yes. And that, that's why I think I think that when this, uh, this this solar system, whatever we're sitting in, was created, I think we the, the true knowledge got passed down of the energetic fields that create life and the life force. Whether you get something uh, beneficial or something you know uh, negative, something sad, something happy, it, it, they, it, they explained it and they gave it to us. They gave us the playbook. It got it got like deciphered throughout the, the transitions. In my opinion. How many times do you think there's been a reset of all of this stuff? Then they let several, you know, millennia go by and everything collapses, turns to dust, and then they say, fuck it, let's do it again. And we already have this template. We'll introduce religion after this many years and and we'll base it all on the current constellations that are going on and that'll be our timetable. How many times do you think we've done that? I hate to even know the number. I don't want to say the answer, <laughs> but it's been so many, Greg, that I think we, and I think we all know this, but yeah. I think that for to like truly say, I, I haven't here. I don't know. We can't pinpoint that, but I, I know it's hundreds, if not thousands of times. we read. Yeah. And I think it happens way quicker than you think. I do believe that. There was, I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but for people just tuning in, maybe watching for the first time. There was this drill that they put into the uh, the earth in Illinois, Chilcote, Illinois, I believe. And they pulled it out and they, they found a coin that is unknown to mankind. And I'm wondering how many millennia back was that coin? And was that also fiat currency based on this fractional reserve bullshit? Yes. Everything they do is regurgitated, right? It's been done. I, I, I have no problem believing that. Just because of how it comes about, how they did it. They've already done it. So everybody acts like they've invented this. No, no, we're not that smart. We just aren't. But we do mimic well. And that's what we do. We're mimickers. I'm not, I don't want to be a mimicker. I want to be original. And that's yeah. what I got this. And yours is, I watch it. And there's a lot of us that are coming. And so I think that's why we're going to create that next great civilization. It's coming. We might not be able to be there when it's realized but to start it i think would be something amazing knowing i did that and was able to move on so. i'm in florida you're in north carolina i showed that video earlier of a potential pole shift you know the way i see it would you the guy that that made that video ben davidson he he lives in Colorado. He's like five miles above, you know, he's in, he's in the safe zone. What are you safe from at that point? If there's a physical pull shift, yeah. you have no electricity, no hot water, no groceries, no transportation, cannibalism, most likely. Yeah. Who wants to survive that? We look, we live close enough to the, the water where eh, I'll just swallow a bunch of water and cross over to the other side. Yeah. I'm okay with that. What do you think? I think that the pyramids hold the key. They seem yeah. to survive. They seem to survive. Um, yeah. And also, I mean, you might be on a mountain, but if when the pole shift happens and you're, the ground shifts and that sinks, you might be in the bottom of the sea. I don't care. If you're not by a point that I think is proven, and I think the pyramids are there, yeah. because they're aligned with the sky, and I think that all has something to do with it, that I think that's a, probably a safe spot. I mean, you know, there's a, in South America, there's a, in the mountains, I think it's 8,000, 9,000 uh, foot up. It's a salt water. Uh, there's also pyramids underwater too. Yes, there are. There are. So I'm, I'm not saying that you're going to definitely make it, but they have a key because they, like, they seem to re-emerge then, right? So I'm not sure. I'm not sure where you're going to go and I'm not sure what's going to be the best. I will tell you this though. Follow what you know. You'll get what you deserve. Maybe you deserve to die this time. What if that's your lot? Like you said, swallow the water, go to the next one. I'm not afraid of death. I, Lord knows with all the shit I've been through in the last three years. Absolutely. I, <clears throat> drowning is the least of my worries. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the fear's gone, right? And when the fear's yeah. gone, 
Now yeah. you're on your journey. The fear is now left. Now you're on. Your yeah. Journey. Yep. Yeah. So what if? What if it? You know. So we have these these pyramids that are underwater, and we have these ones that are above ground. Right. In, right now, the ones that we have in the Giza Plateau mimic Orion's Belt. I wonder if the ones that are underwater mimic something else from a they different time do. period. They absolutely do. Yes, they do. They do, Greg. I believe that. Yeah. They wouldn't have done it. They wouldn't have put no. something there that had a structure that could sustain itself through cataclysm, right? Because they're trying to tell you something. They're trying to tell us yeah. all something. They did it for a reason. Yes. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Um, you know, the, the, the points uh, latitude-wise, we only go so far above and below the e equator, right? Yeah. yeah. And cancer. I think that has a lot to do with it. So. Got a question from Maury. Why am I getting it? Got an echo going on. But uh, Maureen's saying, okay, Jim, how about Pluto's retrograde till what? August or September? What's the dark dive entail? Uh, I think as Pluto went direct into, into Aquarius, uh, we... It, it, it exposed it, or made us have more focus on the truth on who are we actually how powerful are we so we we were self-empowering now when it goes retrograde i love it because it gives us a chance to step back and analyze right so now you want to be like that master that we, we we went forward with pluto we discovered we looked we searched now we want to go back and now we want to do the re things and we want to assess who are we now? What can we be? And then while it's retrograde, we take advantage of that because it is going back into Capricorn, which I think will be the war, start of the war. When it goes back into Capricorn, I think it's in, I think it's August, Greg. Right? And then uh, because I think that's the end of that last Earth sign and all the lessons, the money will be in trouble in July. And so I think as all that happens, we'll just have to analyze what happens. And then as it goes back to red, it's back into Aquarius. We'll, we'll know and have a better plan and a better idea of where we're going. And it'd be it's, more of a Will this be the last time for another, you know, 200 and whatever years yeah, that it, it'll go back into Capricorn? Yep. Yep. Thank God. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Could be. But actually, it's, it's a blessing too, because who knows what's going to get revealed. We only have, I think, like 23 of our 64 codons in our DNA turned on. I wonder what we could be capable of doing if all of them were active. Yes. Would we be those proverbial gods? Would, would we be basically the Anunnaki who are the ones that came in and fucked with our DNA? Right. Um, again, I, I always look at all this like I'm out on this part of the journey for a reason. I think I have to help sniff out. And I think you're doing the same thing, but that yep. doesn't mean we still don't stop on the other side of that, which is finding us. Where, who am I? What am I? What am I capable? Of? You're still doing that. We're not. We haven't lost that, right? Mm -hmm. But it's about revealing why we got here, how we got here, and how do we like let's end this and let's get back to how it's supposed to be, how it is, right? And what's my life purpose while I'm here? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Every day I remind myself I'm a speck, right? My specs no bigger than yours. But damn, our two specs together are pretty awesome. Yeah. You know? so. Is there anything else you want to cover? Because I, I try to keep these two like an hour. I, know, I like an hour. I just I want to talk about the new moon tours real quick. Okay. Yeah. Do it up. Floor's yours. There's, there's 10 conjunctions. The conjunction is two planets together. Um, uh, uh, the sun and moon, Venus is going to be with it. Jupiter is going to be with, uh, with it. And Uranus is going to be with it. This is going to be a tremendous time for you to make a plan for you to build something from a base that is yours. If you do that, Greg, I think that uh, what you plant here, what can grow from here is what the universe is, is how it's made, what it's made of. Um, and, and it's a probably most complete form. So I'm hoping we do this because with all these conjunctions, these planets are trying to help us. And, um, with their, where they're helping us, it's to build a base for the next person, the next layer, so that they can step and make a make a better, you know, next level. 
So I'm hoping we all do that. It's finding your plan, finding you, finding a plan, and then having the goal to work. That's going to be the key. Exciting days ahead, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not right. fearing any pull shift, and uh, no. I think I think some big things are coming for humanity, despite all the bullshit that's being pushed on our faces. Yep, I agree. And May seventh, the new moon, by the way. I forgot to say. Let's tell everyone how uh, they can get in touch with you. Uh, YouTube Panther Jim, nineteen ninety five. Yeah. Um, you can you can come there. I got a lot of. Uh, uh, subscribers so thank you for i was like what is going on here so thank you for that right on i expect i didn't expect it but I, it didn't surprise me it just i, I wasn't i didn't think about it um and uh then you can email me yeah, sfdastjim at gmail.com um, i awesome. do have a wrong channel it's uh, uh i'm just getting it up and running but if you get me youtube you'll be able to get to the wrong so um, right on. I, I always enjoy it yeah um, me too brother I, on and you're exhausted so thank you and uh <laughs> appreciate, your appreciate you having you having you on again and uh we'll definitely do this again on youtube as well as here on rumble Perfect. all right I appreciate it. all right man thanks again for uh joining me take care everyone thanks for watching bye okay.